Hi guys, I'm at the website, so I'm going to do a couple, <clears throat> a few Bible uh, Bible stories for you tonight. I think the first one we'll try is Afraid of the Dark. This one's a really short one. A little boy was afraid of the dark. One night, his mother told him to go out to the back porch and bring her the broom. The little boy turned to his mother and said, Mama, I don't want to go out there. It's dark. The mother smiled reassuringly at her son. You don't have to be afraid of the dark, she explained. Jesus is out there. He'll look after you and protect you. The little boy looked at his mother real hard and asked, Are you sure he's out there? Yes, I'm sure. He is everywhere, and he is always ready to help when you need him, she said. The little boy thought about that for a minute, and then he went to the back door and cracked it a little. Peering out into the darkness, he called Jesus. If you're out there, would you please hand me the broom? <laughs> oh, that was cute. That was cute, guys. Hmm. When I got to heaven. This looks like a poem. When I got to heaven. I was shocked, confused, bewildered as I entered heaven's door. Not by the beauty of it all, by the lights or its decor. But it was the folks in heaven who made me sputter and gasp. The thieves, the liars, the sinners, the alcoholics, the trash. There stood the kid from seventh grade who swiped my lunch money twice. Next to him was my old neighbor who never said anything nice. Uncle Bill, who I always thought was rotting away in hell, was sitting pretty on a cloud nine, looking incredibly well. I nudged Jesus, what's the deal? I would love to hear your take. How'd all these sinners get up here? God must have made a mistake. And why is everyone so quiet, so somber? Please give me a clue. Hush, child, he said. They're all in shock. No one thought they'd see you. I remember reading that one before. After I started reading it. Let's see. Let's try a letter from Grandma. got a letter from grandma the other day she writes the other day I went up to a local Christian bookstore and saw a honk if you love Jesus bumper sticker I was feeling particularly sassy that day because I had just come from a thrilling choir performance followed by a thunderous prayer meeting so I bought the sticker and put it on my bumper boy am I glad I did what an uplifting experience that followed I was stopped at a red light at a busy intersection, just lost in thought about the Lord and how good He is, and I didn't notice that the light had changed. It is a good thing someone else loves Jesus because if, it, if He hadn't honked, I'd never have noticed. I found that lots of people love Jesus. Why, while I was sitting there, the guy behind me started honking like crazy, and then he leaned out his window and screamed, for the love of God, go, go, go. Jesus Christ, go. What an exuberant cheerleader he was for Jesus. Everyone started honking. I just leaned out my window and started waving and smiling at all these lovely people. I even honked my own horn a few times to share in the love. There must have been a man from Florida back there because I heard him yelling something about a sunny beach. I saw another guy waving in a funny way with only his middle finger stuck up in the air. I asked my teenage grandson who was sitting in the back seat what it meant and he said that it was probably a Hawaiian good luck sign or something. Well I've never met anyone from Hawaii so I leaned out the window and gave him the good luck sign back. My grandson burst out laughing why even he was enjoying this religious experience. A couple of the people were so caught up in the joy of the moment 
that they got out of their cars and started walking towards me. I bet they wanted to pray or ask me what church I attended, but this is when I noticed the light had changed, so I waved to all my sisters and brothers grinning and drove on through the intersection. I noticed I was the only car that got through the intersection before the light changed again, and I felt kind of sad that I had to leave them after all the love we shared. So I slowed the car down, leaned out the window, and gave them all the Hawaiian good luck sign one last time as I drove away. Praise the Lord for such wonderful folks. By an unknown author. Oh. Poor old woman. <laughs> Yeah, I'd be interested to see this one. The rules of dieting. We can see what I've been doing wrong, maybe. If you eat something that no one sees you eat it, it has no calories. Then how come I keep getting fatter? Hmm. I don't think that's true. If you drink diet soda with candy bars, the calories in the candy bar are canceled out by the diet soda. Hmm. I had a candy bar today, but I had regular Pepsi, so. See, if I would have just had a diet Pepsi, it would have canceled out the candy bar. Shoot. Maybe tomorrow. When you eat with someone else, calories don't count as long as you don't eat more than they do. But I usually eat more than they do. So strike that one. Food used for medical 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 blah, 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 blah. food used for medical purposes never counts, such as hot chocolate, toast, and Sara Lee, Sara Lee cheesecake. Cheesecake, yuck. Hot chocolate, yum. Toast, yum. But I've never had to use it for a medical purpose. Hmm, who would? That's weird. If you fatten up the people around you, then you look thinner. Hmm. Maybe that's what happened with me and Dottie. Movie-related foods do not have additional calories because they are part of the entire entertainment package and are not part of one's personal intake. Examples are milk duds, buttered popcorn, junior mints, red hots, and Tootsie Rolls. Hmm. We need to go to the movies more often. Cookie pieces contain no calories. The process of breaking cookies causes caloric leakage. <gasps> so I'm going to break all my cookies before I eat them. That is awesome. Thanks for this wonderful advice. I'm so glad I filmed the story, guys. Things licked off knives and spoons have no calories. If you are in the process of preparing something, examples are peanut butter on a knife, while making a sandwich or ice cream on a spoon while making a sundae. I just had some ice cream. But sure made it. Now he's going to lose the weight. It's not fair. He's already lost a bunch of weight. Foods that have the same color have the same number of calories. For instance, spinach and pistachio ice cream. Cauliflower and whipped cream. Note, chocolate, chocolate is a universal substitute that may be used in place of any other food. Unknown author. Ooh, and I love chocolate. But I just think, I don't believe this because then how come I just keep getting fatter? I think they're lying, guys. I really think they're lying to me. I wouldn't believe that story if I was you. Hmm. How about a little mixed up? This looks like a poem as well. Just a line to say I'm living, that I'm not among the dead. Though I'm getting more forgetful and mixed up in my head. 
I've got used to my arthritis, to my dentures I'm resigned. I can manage my bifocals, but oh god, I miss my mind. For sometimes I can't remember when I stand at the foot of the stairs, if I must go up for something or if I've just come down from there. And before the refridge, so often my poor mind is filled with doubt. Have I just put food away or have I come to take some out? And there are times when it is dark, with my nightcap on my head, I know if I'm retiring or just getting out of bed. So if it's my turn to write you, there's no need of getting sore. I may think that I have written and don't want to be a bore. So remember I do love you and I wish you were near. But now it's nearly mail time so I must say goodbye dear. There I stood beside the mailbox with the face so very red. Instead of mailing your letter, I opened it instead. <laughs> oh my gosh. That would be me probably. Give me a couple more years and that'd probably be me. Oh, here's another diet one. I don't know if I want to read that one or not. They lied to us on the last one. This one's called Stress Diet. I don't know. We'll see what it says. This is a specially formulated diet designed to help women cope with the stress that builds up during the day. Breakfast. One grapefruit, one slice whole wheat toast, one cup of skim milk. Lunch. Small portion lean steamed chicken with a cup of spinach, one cup herbal tea, one Hershey Kiss. Afternoon tea. The rest of the kisses in the bag. One tub of haagen ice cream with chocolate chip topping. Mm. Dinner. Four bottles of wine, red or white. Two loaves garlic bread. One family size supreme pizza. And three Snicker bars. <laughs> Late night snack. Whole frozen Sara Lee cheesecake eaten directly from the freezer. Remember, stress spelled backwards is desserts. Author unknown. Wow. It's a stress diet indeed. Maybe that's what I was what's why I've been on this whole time. Stress diet, that's why it's not working. Don't mess with mom. My son came home from school one day with a smirk upon his face. He decided he was smart enough to put me in my place. Guess what I learned in civics 2 that's taught by Mr. Wright. It's all about the laws today, the Children's Bill of Rights. It says I need not clean my room, don't have to cut my hair. No one can tell me what to think or speak or what to wear. I have freedom from religion and regardless what you say, I don't have to bow my head and I'm sure and I sure don't have to pray. I can wear earrings if I want and pierce my tongue and nose. I can read and watch just what I like and get tattoos from head to toe. <laughs> and if you ever spank me, I'll charge you with a crime. I'll back up all my charges with the marks on my behind. Don't you ever touch me. My body's only for my use. Not for your hugs and kisses. That's just more child abuse. Don't preach about your morals like your mama did to you. That's nothing more than mind control, and it's illegal, too. Mom, I have these children's rights, so you can't influence me, or I'll call Children's Services Division, better known as CSD. Of course, my first instinct was to toss him out the door, but the chance to teach him a lesson made me think a little more. I mulled it over carefully. I couldn't let this go. A smile crept upon my face. He's messing with a pro. The next day, I took him shopping at a local Goodwill store. I told him, pick out all you want. There's shirts and pants galore. I've called, <laughs> I've called and checked with CSD, who said they didn't care if I bought you Kmart shoes instead of all those Nike Airs. I have canceled that appointment. Take your driver's test. The CSD is unconcerned, so I decided that was best. I said no time to stop and eat or pick up stuff to munch, and tomorrow you can start to learn to make your own sack lunch. Just save the raging appetite and wait till dinner time. 
We're having liver and onions, a favorite dish of mine. He asked, can I please rent a movie to watch on my VCR? Sorry, but I sold your TV for new tires on my car. I also rented out your room. I'll take, you can take the couch instead. All the CSP did requires is a roof over your head. Your clothing won't be trendy now, and I'll choose what we eat. What allowance you used to get will buy me something neat. I'm selling off your jet ski, dirt bike, and roller blades. Check out the Parents' Bill of Rights. It's in effect today. Hey, hotshot, are you crying? And why are you on your knees? Are you asking God to help you out instead of CSD? Author unknown. <laughs> Guess that's one way to get back. <laughs> wow. There's so many kids that are that really are unruly these days. I mean, it's crazy. There is <laughs> the laws have changed so much, you know. Uh, it's about impossible to discipline them. I know when, uh, well, I don't want to say any names or nothing, so I'm not going to say anything. But I just know that somebody in the family before, on my husband's side of the family, she would always threaten when she was a kid, you know, to the person who was raising her, if you touch me, I'm calling children's services. So she just ran wild and did whatever she wants. And she did whatever she wanted to because she knew there was nothing they could do to her. And that's what happened, too. It was crazy. She just let her go because she let her go run wild because she's like, I can't do nothing with her because every time I threaten to, uh, threaten to do something, she tells me she's going to call children's services. So she just came and went as she pleased, and she was like 11 or 12 years old. It's ridiculous. If I would have acted that way when I was 11 or 12 years old, or heck, when I was even like uh, 15 or 16 years old, it would have been the last time. We knew if I ever talked back when I was a kid, I would have, I would have got whacked in the mouth. I wouldn't do that. I mean, you know, I don't believe in, I know that spanking, some people believe in spanking and some don't. Sometimes I think kids when they're really, really bad, they need a little spanking. But I mean, there's a difference between spanking and beating. Now, when you go crazy and get a belt and just start beating them kids with a belt over and over, that's ridiculous. You know, take your hands, smack them on the bottom, or put them in a timeout. That's, I mean, there's there's a big difference between spanking and beating a child. And a lot of a lot of people these days that I know, anyway are more into when, when you get in trouble they get the kids are getting beat not spanked they're getting beat but anyway I'm gonna stop on that subject because I'm just not going there anymore <laughs> too much controversy over that stuff but I love children and I don't like to see anyone hurt them Ooh, mischievous brothers. Two little boys ages 8 and 10 are excessively mischievous. They are always getting into trouble and their parents know all about it. If any mischief occurs in their town, the two boys are probably involved. The boy's mother heard that a clergyman in town had been successful in disciplining children. So she asked if he would speak with her boys. The clergyman agreed, but he asked to see them individually. So the mother sent the eight-year-old first in the morning with the older boy to see the clergyman in the afternoon. The clergyman, a huge man with a booming voice, sat the younger boy down and asked him sternly, Do you know where God is, son? The boy's mouth dropped open, but he made no response sitting there wide-eyed with his mouth hanging open. So the clergyman repeated the question in an even sterner tone. 
Where is God? Again, the boy made no attempt to answer. The preacher raised his voice even more and shook his finger in the boy's face and bellowed, Where is God? The boy screamed and bolted from the room, ran directly home and dove into his closet, slamming the door behind him. When his older brother found him in the closet, he asked, What happened? The younger brother, gasp, gasping for breath, replied, We are in big trouble this time, dude. God is missing and they think we did it. I <laughs> oh man, I remember reading that one before too. I didn't I didn't recognize it till the end though. That was funny. God is missing, and they think we done it. <laughs> the stranger in my house. We didn't read this one, did we, guys? I think all I read last time was the funny kid sayings so this one's a little bit long a very weird thing has happened a strange old lady has moved into my house I have no idea who she is where she came from or how she got in I certainly did not invite her all I know is that one day she wasn't there and the next day she was she is a clever old lady and manages to keep out of sight for most part but whenever I pass a mirror, I catch a glimpse of her. And whenever I look in the mirror to check my appearance, there she is, holding the whole thing, completely obliterating my gorgeous face and body. This is very rude, I tried screaming at her, but she just screams back. If she insists on hanging around, the least she could do is offer to pay part of rent, but no. Every once in a while, I find a dollar bill stuck in a coat pocket or some loose change under a sofa cushion, but it's not nearly enough. I don't want to jump to conclusions, but I think she is stealing money from me. I go to the ATM and withdraw $100, and in a few days later, it's all gone. I certainly don't spend money that fast, so I can only conclude the old lady is pilfering from me. You'd think she would spend some of that money to buy wrinkle cream. <laughs> Lord knows she needs it. And money isn't the only thing I think she is stealing. Food seems to disappear at an alarming rate. Especially the good stuff like ice cream, cookies, and candy. I can't seem to keep that stuff in the house anymore. She must have a real sweet tooth. But she'd better watch it because she is really packing on the pounds. I suspect she realized this and too make herself feel better she is tamper tampering with my scale to make me think I am putting on weight too. For an old lady she is quite childish. She thinks to play nasty games like going into my closet when I'm not home and altering my clothes so they don't fit. And she messes with my files and papers so I can't find anything. This is particularly annoying since I'm extremely neat and organized. She also fiddles with my VCR so it does not record when I have carefully and correctly programmed it. She has found other imaginative ways to annoy me. She gets into my mail, newspapers, and magazines before I do and blurs the print so I can't read it. And she has done something really sinister to the volume controls on my TV, radio, and telephone. Now all I hear are mumbles and whispers. She has done other things like make my stairs steeper, my vacuum cleaner, heavier, and all my knobs and faucets harder to turn. She even made my bed higher so that getting into and out of it is a real challenge. Lately she has been fooling with my groceries before I put them away, applying glue to the lids, making it almost impossible for me to open the jars. Is this any way to repay my hospitality? She has taken the fun out of shopping for clothes. When I try shop, you know, when I try something on, she stands in front of the dressing room mirror and <laughs> monopolizes it. She looks totally ridiculous in some of those outfits. Plus, she keeps me from seeing how great they look on me. Just when I thought she couldn't get any meaner, she proved me wrong. She came along when I went to get my picture taken for my driver's license photo, and just as the camera shutter clicked, she jumped in front of me. No one is going to believe that the picture of the old lady is me. <laughs> Author unknown. 
I think that's what that might be what's happening in my house. The phone's ringing every time. Hold on, sorry. Sherm, sure, phone for you. Sorry about that, guys. It's um your uncle. Sorry about that, guys. Hello? So that was the end of that story. Hi. Okay, how are you? I am going to go ahead and get off here now because Sherm is in here talking on the phone. And this video is already almost 26 yeah. minutes again. Sorry about that, guys. Yeah. So we'll continue tomorrow with some. 800. 800. I'll try to continue to uh, tomorrow with some more stories for you guys. Yeah. Hopefully I'll be feeling better tomorrow. And I can get the videos up a lot sooner for you guys. Uh, Until then, I love you guys. I, it was before the 25th. I love you guys. Please love one yeah. another. Please bring those souls to Jesus. If you guys got any prayer requests or anything, you can post them on the page. Or you can email them to me at missycrabtree at yahoo.com. I love you guys, and I'll see you tomorrow. God bless. Bye, guys.